How's it going guys, and welcome to my video essay on Nintendo Land. Now I talk about this game a lot in my other videos, and yeah, if you've watched any of those, you'll know that I love this game to bits, and I've been really wanting a sequel for the game, or a Nintendo Land Deluxe, but we haven't heard any news about getting that, and it's very unlikely we'll ever get one, especially not on Nintendo Switch, as it's more of a launch game. So in this video I'm just going to be taking a look back at the game and what made it great. So this was the first game I got on my Wii U, which is why I have such a big connection with it, and I remember opening it on Christmas Day and loading it up, and I had no idea what the game even was, and I just saw that there was a ton of different different games you could choose to play, and I was really pleasantly surprised. So what this game was about was basically just a chance for Nintendo to show off their new technology and all of their different franchises such as like Mario and Zelda and Metroid and Pikmin and other things, and they did this in the perfect way. The theme of the game was meant to be like being in a theme park where every different game is like a different attraction, and they did that really well because when you load up the game you spawn into Nintendo Land and there's a big tower in the middle and then you see all the attractions around the outside, and as you collect more coins from each game you can unlock new items from playing this little pinball mini game at the top of the tower, and these items will be displayed around the park making it feel more alive. But yeah, you can walk over to any of the attractions and there's 12 of them in total, 6 of them are single player games, 3 of them are versus games, and the other three are co-op games. And for me, my favourite ones are actually the co-op ones. A lot of people's favourites are the versus games, where you go against your friends, but I really loved working together on the co-op games and passing all the levels, because they actually have tons more levels than most of the other games, and there's cool boss fights, and they could actually be like their own medium-sized game on their own. All three of the co-op games just worked really well, so I'll go over those ones first, because they're my favourite. I'll do them in order of my least favourite to my favourite of those three as well. The Pikmin one is my least favourite out of the three, but that doesn't mean it's bad. I love all of them so much. This is a really good like basic version of the Pikmin formula, where you collect your little Pikmin and you can level them up and you get different coloured ones and you have to throw them at enemies to attack them and gather stuff and like break blocks. And they made the whole Pikmin game into a really fun little mini game version and I really love what they've done. And there's loads of cool bosses to defeat and once you defeat all the levels you also get expert levels which are really cool. So this game is actually pretty long and there's a lot to do in this. And it was the first time I'd ever played a Pikmin game so it got me into the Pikmin series and I'm really glad I did get into them because they're great games. Now my second favourite of these three is Metroid Blast and this one is really cool. It's like a proper cartoony shooter game, and I haven't actually played any of the Metroid Prime games yet, so I don't know how it compares to the real games, but in Metroid Blast, playing on the gamepad, you're flying around in a spaceship, and you get to shoot enemies with your lasers, and there's a ton of cool bosses, and then people on the Wii remotes are on the ground, and they can turn into like the Samus Ball, I think it is, and roll around, and they can shoot up at the enemies as well. I definitely think the game is easier to play on the gamepad, because you can just fly wherever you want, but both controls are really fun, so I don't mind playing either. I think this was the biggest game in Nintendo Land, as it had so many levels levels as well as loads of extra levels once you complete the main ones for people who want to be challenged a bit more. And there's some really intense boss fights like the big dragon Ridley I think they're called and you have to like shoot the targets on his nose and tail and back. So this one was great to play with friends because you could coordinate like where you're going to shoot and discuss tactics and stuff it was really good. There was also power ups in it as well which made the game even more fun like a rapid fire mode and stuff like that. Moving on to my favourite one of the co-op games which is the Legend of Zelda one and I don't know why I loved it so much it was my first time playing a Zelda game as well and I just had such a Good time playing with my sister. You can either play on the gamepad using a bow and arrow which is so fun, you use gyro controls and like where you look in real life turns where you're looking in the game and it actually feels really good. And then on the Wii Remote you would use a sword where you swing around your sword to hit enemies and you can charge it up by putting the sword in the air for a few seconds to do a massive swing. And both of these styles of playing were really good. I think I prefer the bow one just because it's satisfying to hit good shots. You didn't have to move, it automatically moved you through the level and you just had to take out the enemies as they came to you and at some points it could actually be really challenging. You have a shared life system, so if both of you take too much damage you all die and have to restart the level. And I remember there being some great boss fights on this, and I've played through it quite a few times, like even recently. When my sister comes to visit, we sometimes get on the Wii U and play some of this game. If you're going to try any of them, I would definitely say this one. To be honest, I'd buy a game that was just this. It can make its own massive game, they could like add way more levels, it's really cool. And of course there were the expert levels as well, which were actually really hard at some points. But that was a good thing, because it just meant you had more time to keep playing the game. So those are all the co-op games, which are my favourite ones. And then there's also also the other multiplayer games but where you're against your friends. There's also three of these, which is the Animal Crossing one, the Luigi's Mansion one, and Mario Chase, which is like a game of tag. So basically I'll go over Mario Chase first. So in Mario Chase you can play up to four players with Wii Remotes and then one person on the gamepad. And the person on the gamepad plays as Mario and you have to run away from all of the toads. You have a few seconds to run away at the start and you're actually given a map on the gamepad screen that only you can see and it shows you where all the toads are that you have to run away from. And then for the toads, they have to look for you but all they have on the screen is a meter that tells you how far away you are from them but it doesn't say in which direction so it's kind of like saying hot or cold so you can tell when you're getting closer to Mario. And also you can actually hear the robot lady saying like what colour zone the people are in so they'll be like 
yellow zone and then because the map split up into four different colors so if they say yellow zone you run over there and then most likely by the time you get there Mario's already gone to like red zone or something but it's actually really fun and you can turn on the webcam so they can see your reactions on the tv screen while you're playing which can always be quite funny so that's mario chase and then probably my favorite versus one is the luigi's mansion game this is a really cool spin-off from a luigi's mansion game it has the same feeling there was actually no dark moon or luigi's mansion 3 out at this time so it was pretty much the second like luigi's mansion game which i thought was a fun fact but basically the person on the gamepad was the ghost which had to try and kill all of the like luigi's who played on the Wii remotes and they had their torches they also had to try and kill the ghost but the ghost is invisible to them but on the gamepad the ghost can see everyone else in the area if you flash the torch at the ghost it starts to take damage and once it gets to zero hearts you win but if the ghost kills all of you then the ghost wins a lot of my friends found it much easier to play as the ghost but if you're playing with a lot of experienced players either team is going to do well you just have to use good tactics because basically if you're on the Wii remote you can feel the remote vibrating when the ghost comes near you so to save battery power on your torch you should only flash it when you can feel it vibrating a lot so the last versus mode was an animal crossing one where if you're playing on the Wii remote you had to collect sweets as the animal crossing characters and it would fill up your head and if you had too many your head would go huge and you'd walk really slowly which gave the person on the gamepad opportunity to come and chase you so basically if you're playing on the gamepad it's actually a really cool concept the left stick controls one character and the right stick controls the other character so you're basically playing as two different characters and you have to go around with knives and forks to stab people it actually sounds quite violent for a very cartoony game um but i like that it's quite funny and yeah if the team gets a certain amount of sweets they win but if you manage to stab them then the person on the gamepad wins so that was all the versus modes and they're also great fun especially if you have like a bunch of friends over for a party. Okay, now onto the single player games, which are really good. I really like that this game is like a party game, but it also has a lot of games for when you're playing on your own. But these can also be fun playing with a party where you pass the controller around and see who gets the highest score. So it's actually a perfect selection of games for either playing on your own or with friends. And I'll go through these in no particular order. And I'm starting with Balloon Trip Breeze. This was never one of my favorites, but it's probably just because I didn't play it too much. But I know in this one, use the touch screen on the gamepad to blow gusts of wind at your me who is floating from a bunch of balloons and you just have to dodge obstacles like spikes in the air and there's a few power-ups that can make you shrink so you can fit past a few more things but yeah there's not much to this one you just have to get through each level and it gets harder and harder to dodge the obstacles oh donkey kong's crash course is the next one i'm going to talk about that is one of my favorite games in the whole of nintendo land this is one of the single player games that really stands out to me it's a huge obstacle course where you have to tilt the gamepad to move your little vehicle through each section without crashing and if you crash you have to restart at a different checkpoint and the quicker you are the more points you get so you have to decide whether to sacrifice speed for not crashing or try and just get through it as quick as you can can. and you have to actually maneuver different obstacles around yourself like you have to press buttons to move the obstacles up and down or like spin the stick to rotate obstacles and you even have to blow into the mic which is kind of annoying sometimes but it is quite funny and it makes for a really entertaining game and it's actually really tricky to complete the whole course and once you get past the first one there's a secret extra level after that and it gets even harder and this one i actually managed to complete once and it was so fun trying to get through the whole thing this is another one of my favorite single player games on nintendo land and it's takamaru's ninja castle i love this one because it's it's like a cool game where you have to chuck ninja stars and it actually feels like you're chucking them because you hold the gamepad in one hand and then drag your finger across the screen to chuck a ninja star into the TV and like where you point the gamepad actually aims on the TV it's really cool and you have to try and kill all of the ninjas without them attacking you or without any of them getting away and I'm yet to do this perfectly there's a cool boss battle at the end as well which I only just got to last week I'd never actually completed the game as a kid I realized and I was playing it like the other day and I finally managed to find the boss and I didn't even know about it before yeah this is one of my favorites and there's different moves you can do on the gamepad to unlock special abilities such as if you draw a line sideways it will slow down time for a bit and if you draw a circle you can chuck bombs everywhere and if you draw a tick on the gamepad you can actually chuck triple ninja stars and this game's set in a really cool like dojo place i love the aesthetic of it and it's just a really fun one to try and beat your high score on okay the next one's pretty cool and it's captain falcon's twister race which i was also playing the other day but i just couldn't get to the end of it basically there's 12 areas and you're going really quickly through a race course and you have to tilt the gamepad to turn but then there's lots of obstacles in the way and if you hit them you slow down or some of them even kill you and stop your run completely and that's the trouble i had i got to area eight and each time i got there it was just a section where i could not dodge these red like spiky things and they would blow me up and i'd have to restart it's very difficult i'd be very amazed if you can complete this one because i found it so hard so let me know if you've ever done that one okay the next single player game is yoshi's fruit cart and this is another single player game that i haven't played that much because the concept wasn't my favorite but it's still quite fun but on this one you're playing as yoshi he wants to eat all of this fruit and you have to draw 
draw a line on the gamepad to go past all of the fruits and then to get to the exit. But the gimmick is you can't actually see the fruit on the gamepad, so you have to look at the TV while drawing the line on the gamepad and try and get him to go past all the fruit. And you actually have to go past some of the fruit in a correct order, they have numbers on some of them. And if you don't go in the right order then you have to restart the level. So yeah, this one can actually be quite tricky. And you have to use like your spatial awareness to line it up, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again soon and see if I can get any better at it because I wasn't very good last time I tried. The last single player game is called Octopus Dance and I think this is the one I've played the least. You have to follow this instructor who moves his hands or jumps or tilts and you have to use the sticks to move your hands then tilt the gamepad to actually tilt or like flick the gamepad upwards to jump and you have to copy all the movements he does so it's kind of like one of those games where you have to press left right up down at the right time i started playing it last week and i could not get past like level three or something when he started tilting and moving his arms in weird directions and it speeds up as well and every level it changes from you having to look at the gamepad to follow his movement um, to then looking at the TV. So yeah, it does get quite confusing <laughs> and probably why I didn't play it much as a kid. I was probably too stupid to actually follow along. But yeah, that's all the games. I can safely say that my favorite solo attractions in the game are the Ninja Star one and Donkey Kong's Crash Course one. So those are my recommendations if you play the game. And basically there's also stamps you can get in the game for extra challenges. They're pretty much achievements like you would get on Xbox or trophies on PlayStation. And it's just if you do little challenges within each game, you can unlock a stamp. And also if you complete every single game, Game. There's different objectives you have to do to complete to get a star in each game and once you get a star in each game You've like completed the game and I haven't actually done that even though I've played the game for over 60 hours That's my next objective is to complete the game and the robot lady will congratulate you I don't really know what she says because I haven't done it <laughs> But um, yeah, so that's like the aim of the game if you're technically playing to beat it But it's not really about that you can just play whatever you want on it So that's why I love Nintendo Land because it's got all of those great attractions And if you're gonna get a Wii U this is a must-have game because it's also one of the only games left on Wii U that isn't ported to Switch. So yeah, definitely play this game once in your life. It's a great one. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video looking back on the game. And I'm probably going to go and play it now because it's actually got me excited talking about it. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to see more content like this. And let me know if there's any other games you want me to do to like look back on, like Wii games or something like that. Yeah, comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.